Hey, what do you say pizza lovers? Welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm gonna show you guys my really simple New York style pepperoni pizza. This is a recipe I created last summer. It doesn't matter what kind of an oven, whether you're using your oven inside or if you happen to have an outdoor pizza oven like I do. This one was uh, very generously given to me by Uni last year. This is the Uni 16. But the recipe that I've come up with is meant really for the indoor oven. 550 degree oven, get that pizza stone nice and preheated for about 45 minutes, just like I'm doing here in my oven. Now I'm not here to sell you an oven. This thing's not sponsored at all. I do like using it. I'm glad they gave it to me. I'm just showing you this to give you an idea of what's going on in this oven. There's an L shaped burner. So we have a burner coming across and then across the back. Now you do have to be careful in these ovens. At least I did. There's a little bit of a learning curve to this. So that L-shaped burner is putting out a tremendous amount of heat. What happens to a lot of people is they'll put their pizza in, the outer crust will burn, the toppings will burn, and the bottom won't be cooked at all. So what I like to do, and my advice, is to preheat on the highest setting, about right there. You see those flames, how high they are? I'll preheat there for about a half an hour. I want that stone totally preheated all the way through to the bottom. And then right before I put my pizza in, I will turn it down just right about as low as it'll go. If you're having a windy day, this might not work out for you. The wind may blow it out. So this is my setup here. You can see I've ruined plenty of pizzas in here. That's why my pizza stone is all stained with burnt sauce and cheese. But part of the fun is learning. And for me, it's a lot of fun to share all this stuff with you guys. I just love making these videos. So let's talk about this pizza dough that I made. This is a New York style pizza dough. If you wanna see the extended version of this that I already posted, it's a 20 minute long video. I go into great detail about it. I'll put it up in the iCard above. This is gonna be kind of rapid fire. So what we're doing is taking 393 grams of water and I'm adding into that five grams of active dry yeast. I'm gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes to bloom. And then in my mixing bowl, I'm gonna use 654 grams of Caputo Americana flour. To that, I'm gonna add 65 grams of Caputo Semolina flour. Next, I'm gonna add about four grams of diastatic malt. And then I'm gonna add 19 grams of salt. I'm gonna put it in my stand mixer here, mix all these dry ingredients together. And then I'm gonna dump in my yeast and water into this mixture. And I'm gonna let the stand mixer mix this for about five minutes. And while it's mixing, slowly dump in 12 grams of olive oil. When the dough starts to climb up to the top, that's when I'm gonna shut it off. And so I'll finish it off on the countertop what I'll do is I'll roll it into a log like this, and then I'll take one or two hands starting at the end. I'll push away from me, and then I'll roll it back. Push away, roll it back. And I'll do this for about five or 10 minutes. Really want to develop that gluten structure. And then I'm going to put it in an oiled bowl, wrap it with some press and seal or saran wrap or a towel, and let it sit out on your countertop until it doubles. Depending on how warm or cold your kitchen is, that could take an hour, it could take two hours, but you want it to double in size. And after it's doubled in size, turn it out onto the counter, cut it in half roughly and weigh it. You should get about 571 grams for each dough ball. And then what you wanna do, it sounds counterintuitive, but I take the ball, kinda turn it into a rectangle, and then I start folding over the corners into itself. And when I can't fold them anymore, I start to tuck those corners up and into the ball. It makes for a real nice tight pizza ball. And then you can finish it off by rolling it on the counter. This is really where you wanna spend some time making it as perfect as you can. This is what's gonna help you have a nice round pizza when you're finished. And then once again, it's gonna go into an oiled bowl covered. And for me, I will put these in the refrigerator for up to three days. And then about an hour or two before I'm ready to start making the pizzas, I take those out of the refrigerator and let them come up to room temperature on the countertop. And while those are sitting out on the counter is the perfect time to make your own pizza sauce. I really truly believe in making your own sauce. The store-bought stuff is meh, okay in a pinch. But if you're gonna make your own pizza, you may as well make your own sauce, it's not that hard. And to do that, I start with two tablespoons of a high quality 
olive oil. I'm gonna warm that up over a medium heat. And to that, I'm gonna add three cloves of crushed garlic. You don't wanna brown the garlic here. You just want to heat it through, kind of making a garlic oil. So just until it becomes really nice and fragrant. Then you're gonna dump in one 28 ounce can of San Marzano whole peeled tomatoes. To that, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of oregano, a tablespoon of onion powder, about a teaspoon of black pepper, about a tablespoon of salt, two teaspoons of sugar, a dash of crushed red pepper flakes. I like a sauce that's got a little bit of a zip to it. And then I'm gonna take my immersion blender and I'm just gonna pulse this real quick to break down those tomatoes. And then I'm gonna let it simmer on a medium low for about 10 minutes, just to heat it through. Then it'll be ready for the pizzas. All right, so our stone is coming up to temperature, getting up around 700 in the back, about 520 in the front. So now that it's nice and preheated, I'm gonna go ahead and start to turn that flame down a little bit lower. This is a crust that could burn at that temperature, so we're gonna turn it down to let that back cool down a little bit. And that's the perfect time to start working on the dough. So it is windy out here. I might lose a little bit of this. I'm using semolina down on my board. I used to use uh, cornmeal and that would burn. And I'll put a little bit on the dough inside the container. That way I can dump it onto my hand and get it out. Now the side that doesn't have any is gonna go down. And just so you know, your dough that was facing up should be the side that goes down when it goes in the pizza oven. That's gonna give you the best chance of it not sticking. And because this dough is a low hydration dough, it should not tear on you if uh, you're afraid of dough tearing. It's pretty strong. And what I'll do, just start making my round. And I'm pushing down with my fingers and then out towards the edges. You wanna leave a little bit, this is called the cornichone. You wanna leave a little bit of gas in the edge. Flip it over. Give it just a little bit more. And same thing, we'll just start pushing down, spreading it out, leaving about a finger's width edge that you don't want to touch and now we got something to work with so I can pick it up and start to use my hands what I'll do is I'll take my knuckles put them together underneath and just gently you don't have to go crazy here just start stretching it to the edges and we want to go you know about 16 inches so get it close and then I'll show you a little secret that I like to use. Some call it cheating. I'll just keep going around a couple more times. You can start to let gravity do the work as it gets bigger. And then once I feel like I'm close, I use a pizza screen. I'll have links below to these. This is a 16 inch screen, which is the maximum size this will fit. I have eight inch screens, I have 10 inch, 12 inch. This makes it really easy to get it in the oven and also to shape your pizza dough. So if we look down here, we'll see how close I got. So we're close. So I'll just pick it up and keep stretching it till I get it to fit on there perfectly. And there we go. So the other benefit of this pizza screen is getting it in the oven without a peel and without worrying about it sticking or getting stuck halfway. We'll take it off of the peel once it firms up a little bit. Okay, so my last New York style pizza video, I put the sauce down first. In this video, I'm putting the cheese down first. This is whole milk, low moisture mozzarella that I had the deli do in slices. This is just all about efficiency. If you put the cheese down first and it's shredded, it's harder to spread the uh, sauce over top. So we're gonna do eight ounces of low moisture, whole milk mozzarella cheese. 
So eight ounces of cheese and then eight ounces of that pizza sauce. The way I know it's eight ounces is I went out and I bought an eight ounce scoop or a ladle. So I'm gonna put it right down in the middle. I'm gonna grate in a little bit of Parmesan Reggiano into the sauce. And now when I spread the sauce, it'll spread it out evenly. And now the pepperoni. Put down as much as you like. My actual favorite kind of pizza is a plain cheese, but I do like pepperoni as well. So that's what we're gonna do today. And there we go, one pepperoni pizza coming up. Let's get it in the oven. All right, so we're around 550. I brought this into my garage because the sunlight is a little awkward this time of year and the camera could not see what was happening. And so the first couple minutes, I use the screen. I'm gonna push it right in, just like that. And I'll give it a turn every couple minutes. This will probably take between five and eight minutes to do this style of pizza. So it's been in for about a minute. You'll notice that back left is the hottest and that's where it's starting to puff up. So very easily with my pizza screen, I can start turning it. And now we'll let that side catch up. All right, it's been about another minute or so. It's starting to smell that sauce, the garlic cooking. I'm just gonna check this bottom to see if I can take it off of here yet. Almost. And there we go. It's bubbling away in there, smells amazing. I think I'm ready to get this off the screen. Okay, so to do that, just use my peel. Just give it a little bit of a turn. Now let's get it right on there. And now that real hot pizza stone should start crisping up that bottom real nice for us. So again, I'll give it about a quarter turn once a minute. We're at about the four minute mark now. So about halfway through. Now let's see how we're looking on that underside. That looks perfect. So about eight minutes. Let me get this back outside where we can cut it. it might take me a minute, so the cheese might harden a little bit, but uh, bear with me. All right, let's take a look here. Nice job on the outer crust. How about that undercarriage? Nice and brown, good looking, good looking right there. Pepperoni, some nice pepperoni grease. Let's get a bite. All right, one bite. So if I had to rank this on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, I give it a score of